An international summit on climate change is underway in Beverly Hills. Governor Schwarzenegger opened the summit this morning, and President-elect Barack Obama also made a pre-recorded statement. The summit includes representatives from all over the United States and 19 other countries. Now, the effects of climate change here in San Diego is a topic of a major study released just this week. Lauren joins us now with a look at some of the findings. Lauren? Steve, the latest autumn Santa Ana's blew through Southern California this past weekend. When the winds eased, another thousand homes were gone. The just-released study on climate change in San Diego finds fires like these will burn more land and do it more often. As a result, our region's ecosystems will dramatically change. Last year at this time, this was um, a lot different. This was a construction pad. Uh -huh. with We took out 2,000 truck yards of soil and made these coves because our right. objective is actually to figure out how to... Um, encourage nature to thrive in an urban environment. Tertia Delgin is fighting progress. The progress of aggressive exotic weeds in her neighborhood canyon along 32nd Street in San Diego. Tertia and a group of volunteers have planted hundreds of native plants in an attempt to take back land overtaken by exotic grasses and reeds. Our big problem here is something called rip gut brome which has the little foxtail-like um, end on it. More frequent wildfires are making it easier for these exotic weeds to spread and establish themselves in wider areas. What we're already seeing in our, in our back country and everywhere is a, is a trend towards um, a replacement of our native sage scrub, chaparral, oak woodland communities with homogeneous weedy fields, basically which carry fire more frequently and more rapidly, and it just keeps getting worse. Plants and animals native to Southern California have to be tough. This can be a harsh environment. Take the plants, for example. They have drought dormancy built in. When it gets too dry for too long, they simply go to sleep and then wake back up when the water is present again. And they're born of fire. They've adapted to it. When fire burns them, they burn to the ground, and then they come back. But in 2050, we may be so dry and the fires so frequent, the plants won't be able to survive. Historically, coastal sage and chaparral has burned every few decades. Now it burns every few years, and it can't recover quickly enough. There's large parts of this county that um, were healthy coastal sage scrub before 2003, and now are vast weedy fields. And when those weeds replace native stands of trees and shrubs, the animals which count on these habitats disappear along with the plants. There are certain uh, groups of birds that are really hurting in the county, those that need the dense older pine forests, for example, some of the tanagers, creepers, woodpeckers that need the dense old forests. Back in her local canyon, Tertia Delgin will go on, nurturing her crop of native plants hoping they can survive in an environment which is increasingly foreign to their needs. Reading the San Diego Foundation's 2050 climate study is sobering. For example, we already import 90 percent of the water we use in San Diego, and we're still expecting to be joined by another 1.5 million people in the near future. How do we pull that off in a drier time? Some answers tomorrow night at 7. And I know you've been talking about for quite some time that uh, want to know how we look in the future, take a look at the south of us to, to the Baja area. Yeah, they say um, uh, 20 or 30 miles to the south will generally be our weather mm -hmm. um, in a couple of decades. It's interesting to think of it in those terms. Right. Uh, they're able to do a lot uh, tighter little models now, and that's why communities like San Diego can really look and see what our weather will be like in a drier climate.